Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our sale on Monday the 26th of September. So it's the day before our autumn fine sale. As usual with the double view, uh, some, some sort of interesting things get held back to go into that weekly sale. So what have we got for you? Well, I think we looked at one of these, which is coming up on the 20th, but um, here's another um, set of chemist drawers, this time with a stand made to uh, raise it up and present them, I suppose. So it's lot 2177. Very striking sofa here, lot 2175. This is the Ron Arad design. Uh, I'm told it's very comfortable. It is very comfortable. It is very comfortable, Madam says it must be. <laughs> uh, looks like the original fabric, a little bit of staining down here. It's seen a few parties, but um, yeah, it's very, nice. very distinctive that. Um, around here, more distinctive things. This is 2198. This is a Black Forest um, really a smoker's stand because we've got an ashtray. You could put other things in it, of course. You could have it in the hall and put keys and coins in it. Uh, and we've got these two little flaps here for compartments. Oh, and there's a musical, there's a musical movement to that. It's not currently operating, but the idea is when you lift that up, you get music played to you, but not on the other side. Only music on one side. Happy tobacco and less happy tobacco, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Special cigarettes, perhaps. Yes. Anyway, with the lovely bear climbing up the, the, the stem. Great fun, that. Over that away. Yes. Let's fly around. This is a bit unusual. This is by Thomas Messel. Who is Thomas Messel? You say, well, Thomas Messel's a furniture maker based in Gloucestershire and very popular in the 1980s. Here's some... Here we are, this is a bookcase, it says, and funnily enough, gosh, there is the bookcase. There is the bookcase, albeit slightly jazzed up with those little finials, but there we are, the, the, the bookcase in the style of Regency furniture, it says, and then they also had side tables and centre tables and uh, pedestal side tables, etc. So there's, um, and this comes with even a letter from Thomas Messel to um, Tommy, who's the gentleman that owned this furniture. 1985 March, um, just talking about the furniture and what have you, and um, looking forward to seeing him by the looks of things. So, um, yeah, great, great, nice, nice thing that. Um, and there are other pieces of metal furniture throughout the cell. That was 2173. Carrying on. Wall lights. These look very showy, don't they? They're very, very showy. Slightly wobbly. Yes. Can be tightened up. They are carved wood. 2519, we turn them around. So a lot lighter. Very lightweight carved wood, um, but nicely done. Mm. Probably need a bit of rewiring. But we always have to say that regardless. But uh, yeah, smart those. Carrying on into the main room. What can I find in here? How about some pictures? Uh, in, in the manner of Tamara de Lempica, there we have the uh, writhing nudes there, lot 2758. It's not a particularly old painting, but it is decorative, if that's the look you like. Another one in a similar vein there, 2764. We've got this uh, pair of sofas here. These are very showy, aren't they? Mm. These are more in the sort of Chippendale style. I'm leaning over to see the ticket. 2138. Pair of them with a sort of hump or camel nice back to them. Yes. Uh, again, not period, but but nicely done. Clocks, Hansford of Ilminster. That's sort of early Victorian, late Regency. Oh, Painted nice. dial, eight day. Yeah, pretty thing, isn't it? What's that? Two one six zero. Oh. Two one six zero. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I drift past a large and impressive chest on chest lot two one five seven, in very nice shiny repolished condition with a brushing slide looks pretty well ready to go another nice clock here johnson of dublin oh, that's nice it's a good size isn't it that one it's not too tall if that's no. what you're saying well, yes some of them are so big you yeah. can't fit them yeah in. little eight day clock there mm. some aboriginal art australian art uh, this one is janet forrester lot i stooped down 2756 mm. uh, i'm going past something else unusual this um it's been catalogued as Early 20th century Irish, I believe, maybe early yes. 19th century, I forget which we said. 2153, either way, it's an oddity made for a particular location. You've got a drawer at one end, you've got a cupboard here, and you've got a cooler here, a, a lead-lined um, cellarette or wine cooler or what have you at the back. So uh, that's a bit different. Ben Mail. Now, Ben Mail, not everybody's cup of tea, but we hoist this up. You don't get Ben Mail much bigger than that. 
There we go, very much sort of 1960s, 70s in style, um, often in, in bright oranges and reds and things, but um, that's, uh, that's a lot of Ben Mail. Mm. Um, the ticket has fallen off of it. Oh, look it up. It will be reattached, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And then if I slide that up there, past Ben Mail, this caught our eye, didn't it? It's great fun. 2150 is uh, what they sometimes call a yacht bar or a dry bar. It's mid-century design. So uh, from the um, the enjoyment side, uh, this is the, the, the front of it. And then at the back, we've got it fitted out behind with the bartender's oh, around, requirements. It's <laughs> um, a bit early for yes, me. Yes, not much though, is it? No, um, there we go. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, nice that, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely bit of timber. Smart thing. I think we said six to eight hundred. Yes, that one. we did. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we're going to have a look at the smalls. Okay. In the smalls, as ever, a uh, curious selection. Lots of booze. Um, never a bad thing, it seems. Such as lot 2272. Um, four bottles in the lot. Didn't actually sell last time. So turn, which generally seems to be the case that either sells really well or doesn't sell at all well. It's something You're a Christmas it will. <laughs> yes, maybe. I just, um, sorry, I was just looking at um, these ladies. That's rather... Well, that... it's a, it's essentially, this is a photo lithograph, oh, okay. I would say. So it's a posh black and white print from mm. about 1895. Looks like a good party. It's a Burlington proof. Mm. Um, it's after Ernst Normand. So, but also very much along the lines of people like Alma Tadema and what have you. Right. Um, so yeah, it looks like a great party for some anyway. Yes, exactly. uh, not Maybe not for others. Yes. They're not all looking quite so happy. Uh, no. But um, no, not that fashionable these days, of course. But anyway, 2731, if it, if it does appeal. Uh, these catch my eye. What have we got here? 2268. So English. What have we got on the back? Nice marks. Look, Derby, we can put it written up here, but there's the Derby mark, Derby factory. Uh, Dunstaffnage Castle with mm -hmm. Loch Etrine or Etive, Scotland. Gosh, quite nice, it's isn't very it? Pretty, yeah. And then with it, nice you view. get looks, like, that? looks like Worcester or something. No, it's Derby again, south front of Heddleston Hall, Derbyshire. Mm. Nice, yes, nice, hand painted, very collectible once upon a time. Still some interest. Uh, Dom Sermin Perignon, 1996. Again, usually bought for birthdays, celebrations, 2265. Alongside it, another plate from um, this series. I will beat the porter that put even magic tape on gilding. But it hasn't done any damage in this occasion. So this is another Derby plate, but very striking decoration, 2264. Um, from the... Pars service, it looks like. I don't think that's Paris. Very rare, it says. There we go. So that would have been just made for one family, one person, that right. service. We wouldn't have made that pattern for anybody else. Uh, carrying on down the line, modernist glass, modernist electric clocks, kind of fun. Grotesque jugs. <laughs> it really is. Well, it really is because it is. Yes. Um, in the silver section, one of these, um, is it Hukin and Heath? Yes, it is the H and H Hookin and Heath, uh, usually attributed as being a design by Dr. Christopher Dresser. Um, it's silver plated, sometimes called a toast rack, sometimes called a letter rack. You could do either, depending on the fatness of your letters and toast. Uh, and it's lot two eight two seven, but it's sort of a classic bit of design that. Uh, and bearing in mind that he did that in I don't know eighteen seventies or something like that, so ahead yes. of its time. Yeah. Uh, you admired this? Uh, yes, it's very pretty. Two 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 eight two two. Yeah. Uh, so what have we got? Marks Birmingham end. That's about nineteen fifteen or thereabouts. George V. Um, cup comes away from the base. Looks to be in nice enough condition. Yeah, it's very nice. Glass looks good. See, so always open the lid. And that all looks good, although, of course, the cork might not be tight enough to keep the fluid Actually, in. Mm. But um, maybe when it gets moistened again, yeah, it would. But lovely. Thing. And this lovely, rich crocodile colour, isn't yeah. it? Super. So, yes, a nice thing there. Um, 
What else do we have to show you? Oh yes, yes. Um, running down this side. You you said what's that? And I ah, said, well, this is um, this is lot. I said that's lot two four three five. I said yes. You um, did. It was, and, it was um, this one that was great fun. Love your enemies, trust but few, and always paddle your own canoe. <laughs> yeah. So and then the drinking cup. I yes, like, this 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 is fun, isn't it? Oh, it's the yeah. puzzle jug. Solve the puzzle. So within this jug, there is good liquor, fit for parson or for vicar. But how to drink and not to spill will try the utmost of your skill. So as with all these puzzle jugs, so there is a hole at the bottom of the handle on the inside, and the handle is hollow. <laughs> and then the liquid can be sucked through one of these holes by blocking the others. And that He's way you it. don't tip it up. I have, I have ruined it. There we go. Um, so this is sort of Torquay, Cornish, uh, Devon motto wear. Um, and then we've got over the back here some um, Dartmouth wear with a sort of spotted. And you can see the connection to the Cornish wear where you get those blue and white ringed jars and what have you um was quite collectible at one time I say this about so many things not particularly collectible these days you often see this pattern with the house upon it oh. good things be scarce take care of me there yeah. we go someone has no damage on that job yeah. so yeah not not the most fashionable you get some dolphin not are these dolphin i don't know if even dolphin yes they are you get some dolphin figures and a jug and what have you so mix it up for your money yes including in it goodness this is Dalton silicon wear. Try that thing about silicon wear. I think it's rather nice. It's very grubby looking. It needs a good clean. But uh, in all this impressed decoration um, from the Dalton factory. This one is dated 1882. Quite a nice little jardinaire. So that's not a bad little lot if, no. you, if, you, if you've got time and energy and interest. Estimate in such... uh, 60 to 80. Yeah, so. well, mm. that's it. It's, as we say, not overly sought after. Yes, lanterns over here from the same property as the Thomas Messel furniture. Uh, this is lot 2399. Uh, this large, and I th the lady suggested it might have come from Messel, but I don't know that there's any guarantee of that. But anyway, you've got this lantern together with the four matching wall lights. Um, got a bit of oxidisation upon it, but it'll all, it's solid enough to all clean up, mm. bend back into shape and what have you. So uh, yeah, that's quite fun. Smart, isn't it? Smart, yes. Uh, painted spelter figures of, of candlesticks, should you need them. Lot uh, 2397. Kind of fun. Yes. OTT, but that's what people like at the moment. A nice lamp here with a lovely Vaseline glass shade. The shades are often more Vaseline. valuable. Yes. What does that mean? Well, that's the Vaseline. colour, essentially. Think of oh, really? The, yeah, look at oh, this okay. sort of shading. Right. So, um, yeah. That's a very pretty vase, That's lovely, isn't, isn't it? it? Um, and with it, you get three of these moulded glass lamps that are less sought after, but still, they look like they're all working, got wicks in them and everything. So uh, when the fuel shortages kick in, these could be handy, remember? The... <laughs> yes, that's remember true. Those, you remember that you're not old enough to remember that? Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. I remember the days with the power cuts. Uh, I liked this lot. This is lot 2409. You seem to be getting all of these parks, which is a generous lot in my opinion, but they're not, some are more desirable than others. So you get a pair, there we are, the sort of green man, basically. Mm. You get this carved flowery lily job. Yeah. You get sort of 17th century ten years style, something going on. He's, he's got his flogging stick out. Uh, someone's in trouble. Gambling in the temple or something like that. Uh, you get this Middle Eastern... African mm. palm, another sort of tennis style at the back, a sort of copper Charlemagne plaque that's maybe a hundred years old. But the one that I liked in amongst it all is this one, just because it lists the plants that relate to each saint's day. So we start at January the 6th with screw moss for St. Nilamon, who I must say I'm not overly familiar with St. Philip Nilamon, uh, and it carries on all the way through. So we get um, Gesner Tulip for St. Philip, Monkshood St. Dunstan, uh, Michaelmas Day, um, Michaelmas Daisy, uh, September 29th, and, and on. So uh, there we go. Uh, November 25th, Sweet Butterbur. Yes, for St. I Catherine, that one. Patroness of Spinsters. Gosh. Yes. So anyway, I thought that was nice. It's not the best of colours, but it's just interesting. I thought that was fun, the carving. That was an interesting subject. So there we go. What do I know? 
Um, are we there? Is there anything else I can tell you about you'd like to know I was about? Trying to, I was trying to remember. We did have a walk around. Well, look, we... at, look at this amazing thing. Tell me, tell me what, what what's the that? purpose of that this is. This is 2415 and it is uh, the purpose of it. Well, it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's, a, it's an ornament. It is Rosenthal Studio line um, with this fabulous copper luster finish. It's porcelain. It looks like it's got its original box. And so, you know, it sits on the on the table you i guess you could put fruit in it or something like that and just looks rather and, and is that a well-known rosenthal is a classic yeah um german porcelain manufactory that's been going for many years gosh right. um, and and did and has and does some very stylish bits of porcelain mm. um yeah it's got that sort of and then, sleek and then lastly you did mention the yes what? i said i like that and you said why yes i did say 2507 why. yes why? So it appears to my eye to date to round about 1810, 1820. Sorry. That's right. There we go. Yeah, that there we better. go. And it's a little bit unusual. I like the sort of plainness of it, the needlework. A leopard is always a good start. Why? It's, well, because it's an interesting animal. It's better than a dog. Oh, it's not a symbolic thing. You're not no, I don't to... think, not overly. I don't. Right. We, we haven't got sort of a lion and a leopard or heraldic beasts or anything. Oh, okay. These could be regarded as union flags. Right. Whether they are or not, I couldn't say for sure. The building, I guess it looks English rather than, I don't think it's a Russian thing, but this is a little like an Orthodox sort of, they're slightly unusual, aren't they? Yes. So it's a curiosity. There's nothing mm. on the back to tell us anymore. It's, right. it's in a rosewood frame that dates, no, it's not rosewood, it's mahogany frame that dates to round about 1800, 1810. So, yeah, I just thought that was a nice little bit of mm. needlework folk art, 2507. A couple of nice mirrors up yes, here, nice but mirrors. I can't see a label on them. Maybe they come with that print. There's a mystery just here, seen, isn't it? Until it's, till it's I've fully just seen lotted Betty and Boo. Oh, my goodness. You like Betty Boo? <laughs> no. Yes and no. She's genuine fiberglass, oh, I believe. look at her face. Betty Boo, 2189. Oh, there we go. She's great. Leaning against the lamppost, which lights up, no doubt, if oh, you no wire doubt. it up. Check mm. the wiring first, no guarantees given. I probably put a red light in it. What are you suggesting, well, Betty? <laughs> well, on that note, Time I think we'll, just, we'll end, end things now. Um, we'll do another video for the fine sale, so look out for that one. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you on the 26th. Thank you.